Greetings, everyone. Welcome to this call. Welcome to a beautiful space and time. You have to excuse me if I'm a little sluggish, a little tired, but I want to make sure that I am here for you because it's hard to have someone who is on this level of understanding of your relationship with Abba Father to be on the same page with you, especially during these times. So I'm here, and just want to let you know that you're not alone. Abba is here with us. Says wherever there's two or three gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. So, Father, we welcome you now. Father God, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, God. And I thank you very much, God, for never leaving our side and never forsaking us. So, with that being said, I'm going to say a prayer for you. Before I say a prayer for you, I want you to do one thing, and that is to go wash your hands and wash your feet. And while you're washing your hands and your feet, although I'm driving, I have to use ice. <laughs> That's all I have up here. So I'm going to use ice wash my hands. Maybe I just did it. Okay, now it's your turn. And I will wait. Just run in the bathroom really fast if you can. If not, just wash your hands like I just did. Go wash your hands because we are required to wash our hands and to wash our feet before we come before the throne of grace or else we're considered filthy. I'm not sure if our prayers are not answered. I know our prayers are always answered, I'm pretty sure. But I also know that we're considered filthy. We're supposed to wash our hands and feet before we come before the throne of grace. So let's start getting into good habits and good practices. There's so much to learn that we don't even know about. It's always something new to learn every single day. The Word of God is endless. The power of God is priceless love of God is forevermore, and I'm very humble to be a vessel that God can use right now, or at any time he wants to use me, to help. As you can see, if you look all around you, the world is literally in the book of punishment. walk through the book of Revelation, I work to the times that are at hand, especially when he gets into office, she will bring darkness, known as the harlot in the Bible, to this lady of existence. I want us all to keep something in mind here. Yeah, Howard Shai says that he will never leave us, never forsake us. And he promises us just as sure as light and strike from the east to the west, so shall it be with the coming of the Son of Man. So with that knowing, there has to be a knowing in our heart that even if we're alone, even if we're the only ones that are here, when Yahweh Shai returns, we're going to be rescued. So, even if that's me, or even if that's you, or even if that's both of us, if that's all of us, that will be even more wonderful. 
So our job right now is to focus on our priceless relationship with our Father. Before you do anything at all, every single thing that you do, every step that you take, every move that you make, should literally, you should get permission from our Father. You should say, Yah, God, is this, is this what you want me to do? Or God, do I have permission to move here? Or God, do I have permission to eat this? Or, you know, God, do I have permission to say this? Or God, do I have permission to, you know, give this to someone, you know? So when you do that, you are training yourself for I'm a father to order your steps. So get into those practices first. So the Bible tells us to lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways to acknowledge him, and he shall direct our path. So, Baba will direct our path. But you have to trust him in his word. Ask him for whatever you want. If he doesn't give it to you, it doesn't mean no. It could just mean not right now, or just not the right season, or just not the right time. Okay? So, with that being said, Whatever is going on in your life, you can find it in the Word of God. Whatever question that you have, look in the Word of God. You can find it. Just Google the question or something, like, is there cake in heaven? And put KJV behind it, like King James Version, for example. Whatever your question is, Google that and just put KJV or... A lot of times, I'll even use the chat GPT, like use it with caution. I'm using it right now, and I'm cautious about how much I use it and the information that I give it, because it is a real, live, active robot that will save and store your energy and your questions and whatever you tell it, and it can be used against you later, so be careful of that. But simple questions, you can ask the, the AI. Or you can ask the Google, which is, you know, your AI. Or you can just ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask ask God to even give you a dream. To reveal it to you in dreams and to reveal it to you in confirmations. But be careful because the devil can also give you dreams. So, with that being said, whatever's going on in your life, you have to look at it like this. God is not going to give you more than you can handle. If you feel that it's overwhelming you, it's supposed to overwhelm you. Because in this hour, there's a great shaking going on. And God has to shake you now to prepare you for what's coming up the road in the days ahead. In the days ahead, if you don't receive that shaking right now, it can hurt you later on down the line. That's why God is shaking you up right now. So therefore, later on down the line, it's not going to be so hard for you. It's going to be hard for others. If you're going through what you're going through and you think it's hard, it's going to be 10 times worse for other people who are not even prepared, not even trying to prepare, not even trying to love God, none of that. So count it all joy. Like the Bible tells us to count it all joy when we fall into various trials and various temptations. Count it all joy. And know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his righteousness and his glory for his name's sake. Okay? So, with that being said, let me just go ahead and I'm going to jump on in to this prayer with you, okay? And um, before I pray, keep some things in mind as well, okay? I used to continue to go through trial after trial after trial. And my family and I, we pray together, we fast together. But there were times where we would not pay our tithes, not pay our offerings. Or we would fall asleep without saying our prayers. Or wake up in the morning and just start our day without giving God thanks. Or eat our food without giving God thanks. These things, or even keeping the festivity days. Keeping the Sabbath is very vital for you to remember to keep Sabbath. Keeping the feast days, that's very vital as well. Now, all those things that I mentioned to you are things that can cause trauma to 
tribulations and trials to come into your life and to happen to your life because you're not in alignment with the Word of God. As a matter of fact, those very things that I mentioned to you are the very things that are literally keeping people out of heaven. There's a few other things, and I plan on doing a video about it, but not right now. Those are the main basic ones. Okay? Um, if you look at um, Psalm 91, Psalm 91 says that God will rebuke the devourer for his name's sake. And the devourer comes with our tithes and offerings. As it says in Malachi 3, will a man rob God? Yes, he has his tithes and offerings. So we have to keep in mind, are we asking God for something, but yet we're coming before his throne of grace, robbing him? Or do we have an ought against our family member or our sister or our brother? And an ought can not just mean a grudge, but it can mean like holding something against someone or not forgiving someone or not forgiving in your heart. You have to search your heart like David constantly searched his heart. In the book of Psalms, he was saying, Father, nine words have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin again. So constantly search your heart. Constantly repent. Constantly ask God to forgive you of your sin. The Bible also tells us when praises go up, blessings come down. So praise God. When you find yourself through various trials and tribulations, give God praise. Give God thanks. Give God the glory. A lot of times, Satan and his minions, they will cause havoc to happen in your life. They will cause trauma or turmoil to happen in your life, especially when they see that you're about to get blessed. And then if you take your eyes off of God, and then you fall into the temptation of being angry or upset or disappointed or, you know, things along that line, then you can miss your blessing. So I know I said a lot here, but those are some basics that I wanted you to consider um, concerning your situation that can help you in the coming days ahead, okay? When you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, 2, 3, 4, when the Holy Spirit wakes you up, don't forget to say a prayer, okay? So when you pray, know that whatever you ask for, Abba Father will give it to you because you ask. Okay, ask in his son's name, and the mighty name of Yahweh Shai. In the name of Jesus works as well. I'm Father God, I decree and I declare that they are the head and not the tail. They are the lender and not the borrower. I speak Psalms 91 over them. I speak Psalms 23 over them. And Father God, we ask, according to Deuteronomy 28, that my sister and my brother, as well as myself, that we are found worthy to walk in the blessings of Deuteronomy 28 versus the curses of Deuteronomy 28. We pray, God, that if we didn't know 
the things that I mentioned today to them is that I pray, God, that you will give them a deeper revelation, a deeper understanding, and you will confirm it in your word, and you will show them, God, why it's important that they keep your commandments and your statutes, especially if we say that we love you. Father God, I stand on the knowing that my sister and my brother who are here on this line are by the power of the kingdom of heaven. And I thank you, God, for being there for them. I thank you, God, in advance for working out this situation, no matter what it is. I thank you, God, for a final outcome that is a report in favor of them. Because I hear you saying, God, whose report shall we believe? And we're going to believe the report of the Lord. So if you said that prayer with me, I know it was short, but I want to keep it short on purpose. Because we ask God to do something here. And I want to show you how simple it is when we pray to God and we ask him something. And then we let it go. And we trust and we know that God has our back, that God is there for us. You don't have to go into a whole hour of prayer. No. But you do have to go into a whole hour of praise. And this is the part where you come in at, because I'm going to leave this part for you. What I want you to do is I want you to go onto YouTube and to play praise and worship music. And I want you to just praise God. Praise Him for an hour. If you can, a half hour. If you can, 20 minutes. But just say, Father, I praise you. Father, I thank you. Father, I give you glory. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Father, I love you, God. Father, I worship you, God. Father, I magnify your name. And just cry out to God with your heart. Just keep saying that over and over again. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I praise you, Father. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for answering my prayer, God. Thank you, Father, for sending your son down me on the cross of me, God. Just say that over and over and over again. And from there, once you finish your hour and you get your hour in, I want to tell you 20 minutes or 30 minutes, but I'm going to say an hour for you, okay? So let's go in. You can set your alarm clock if you want to, but a lot of times the Holy Spirit will take over and you may go past that, that hour. You're going to get distractions. Get your phone away from you so you don't answer your phone. You know, whatever you do, if you have to put the children to sleep, make sure, you know, put them to sleep and then go in. Or wake up early in the morning at 4 or 5 in the morning, set your alarm clock then and go in. But know that God is with you and God is going to hear your prayer. Matter of fact, God already answered your prayer. God is just waiting to meet you at the throne. That's it. Simple as that. And then when you're done praying, just be still. Just sit very still. Don't say anything. And then see what, see what it is, the first thought that comes to your mind. And then from there, pick up the Word of God. Or you can just go straight to reading the Word of God from there. And then when you go straight to reading the Word of God, the way I do it is, I say, God, whatever you want me to know right now, just let me know. And I will just open up the Bible and let it fall open itself. Whatever page that you read is what God is saying to you right now. So hopefully that helps you glad that I was able to assist you the best way that I can and I pray continuously for you even after this call is over with I'm still going to be praying for you I'm still going to be lifting you up I'm still going to believe in God for your testimony and um, once again God is saying whose report shall you believe we shall believe the report of the Lord because God says that he will never leave us nor forsake us okay so with that being said you have a beautiful day I love you with the love of the Lord, and um, go ahead and start praising God, and start getting your breakthrough, because the devil hates praises, so he's going to do everything to distract you, but remember, how bad do you want it, because when praises go up, blessings come down, alright, you have a beautiful day, or a beautiful night, God bless each and every one of you, have a good night, Amen.